Hi, I'm Laura and I'm here at Cats Protection in Hazelmere and today I'm here with this lovely boy who's on my lap. His name's Beanie and his sister Pebbles is hiding under the cat castle. She's feeling a little bit shy but hopefully if we sit here quietly, don't make too much noise, she might come out and see us. But we'll let her decide. Today's story is called Coco the Cat, a part-time pet and it's by Alison Wainwright and she's written this book to raise money for cats protection so I'll put the link in the description and uh, if you're interested in getting your own you can do so let's find out what happened to Coco it was moving day for the Gale family they were going to miss their pretty little house the last one in a row of four cottages on the edge of town the cottages were on a quiet, dead-end road and their back gardens faced onto green fields full of buying sheep and mooing cows. But the Gales needed more space for their growing children, such as a bedroom each for Harry and Maisie. And so Mr and Mrs Gale had sold their cottage and bought a bigger house. The Gales had a black cat called Coco. He was very interested in the removal lorry parked on the drive and jumped inside to investigate. The lorry was new and strange but everything in it smelled of things he knew well. He could spy a chair he liked to sleep on and there was the dining table he wanted to jump on but everything was laid out all wrong. It was piled up high and packed in tight and too difficult for Coco to climb. Two noisy men arrived to load the last of the Gale's furniture on board scaring Coco. Coco ran to hide under some flowers to watch as the men shut the lorry doors and set off on the short drive to the new house. The Gale family said goodbye to their old house and got into their car. They were excited about moving house. As well as being bigger, the new house would be better. It was nearer to town, nearer to Harry and Maisie's school, and nearer to all the things that the Gale family liked to do, like football and dancing and swimming. The car set off down the road to follow the lorry, but they weren't taking Coco with them. The new owner of the Gale's cottage was an old lady called Alice. Alice grinned happily as she parked her car outside her new house. The cottage was just as pretty as she remembered it. Possibly even prettier, Alice thought, as she had first seen the house in winter and now it was spring and yellow and purple flowers lined the path to her front door. Alice walked up the path and put her new key in her new lock. She turned the key and opened the door onto the empty hallway, but it was only empty for a moment. To her surprise, a black cat brushed past her feet and into the house. Alice recognised Coco from when she'd first seen the house. He was a very handsome cat and was so friendly he'd followed them to and fro like a dog might. Alice had liked the cat so much she joked with Mr Gale, does he come with the house? And now it looked like the joke had come true. Coco paid no attention to Alice. He was busy doing more investigating. Where was his soft warm sofa? More importantly, where was his food bowl? The house was empty. Everything had been swallowed up inside that strange lorry and had gone away. Then he noticed the bookshelves were still here, but all empty now. Brilliant fun for jumping onto. Alice laughed at Coco exploring the empty bookcase and went outside to her car to get more boxes. She met the man who lived next door. His name was Mick and he explained why Coco was still here. The girls were going to do some building work in their new house. They thought Coco would be a bit scared moving to a new house and even more frightened by noisy builders. So they had decided to let Coco stay with Mick for a little while. Of course, Coco didn't understand he was meant to live with Mick now and not in his old house. Since Alice liked Coco, she didn't mind him visiting her. She sometimes got a bit lonely living by herself and Coco was good company. Although he slept a lot of the time, he made sure he curled up to sleep wherever Alice was in the house. 
and when he was awake he talked to her in meows, or purred when she stroked his soft black fur. There wasn't a cat flap for Coco to come and go as he pleased, so he had to wait by the front door to be let in when Alice came home. But if Coco ran in the house when Alice was going out, she had to catch him and send him back outside. Coco was good at hiding in places that made him difficult to reach, and he often made her leave late. Alice was never very cross at Coco though, because she'd quickly grown to love him. But then Alice didn't see Coco for a while. After a few days she knocked on Mick's door and asked if Coco was okay. Mick explained that Mr Gale had taken him to their new home as the building work had finished. Alice had known this day would come but she couldn't help feeling sad. Coco used to stand on his back legs to tell her to hurry up and unlock the door to let him in and had left a paw print on her front door. Every time she saw that muddy print her heart felt as empty as her house was now that Coco wasn't there. Alice thought she should wash the paw print off the door so that it didn't keep reminding her of Coco and making her miss him. But she felt that removing the print was like removing the cat forever. So she couldn't do it. And so the paw print and Alice's love and her sadness all stayed there. One evening, Alice boiled the kettle to make a bedtime drink. She stared out of the window into the darkness and could see the shape of a black cat. The cat was jumping over the fence from Mick's garden into Alice's garden. Alice got excited for a moment because she thought that the cat was Coco. But then she decided it couldn't be Coco as this cat looked smaller than she remembered Coco being. The next day Alice came home from the shops and saw the strange black cat again. Now she could see his face it really did look like Coco, only thinner. When she got out of the car and said, here puss puss puss, the cat ran away, scared. If it, if it had been brave, bold Coco, he would have come to say hello. Just then, the neighbour Mick appeared and told Alice that the black cat really was Coco. The Gale family had kept Coco inside for three weeks to get used to his new house and be able to find his way back when he was let outside. Coco didn't like being kept inside, but once they let him out, he didn't like the outside either. Coco loved to lie in the long grass and sleep in the sun. When the sun got too hot, he liked to sleep under the thick, cool hedge. He liked to climb trees and scratch scratch his claws on their rough trunks. He had the best fun chasing leaves when the wind made them spin and fly. And most of all, he loved to catch a mouse, such a delicious treat. There were none of those things in his new garden near the centre of town. There was just street after street of houses. Their gardens were very small and were made out of stone, not out of trees and grass. And so Coco kept looking for somewhere good to sleep and play until he found he was back at his old house. The cat looked thinner and a bit different because he hadn't had any mice to eat. He was also a bit scared after his journey to his old house, so he had run away from Alice at first. But it really was Coco. Mick and Alice were happy to see the lovely cat again. They agreed that Coco was very clever to know how to get back there. But Harry and Maisie missed him, and so Mr Gale was coming to take Coco back that evening. Alice felt sad again, but she understood how Harry and Maisie felt. But Alice found Coco again a few weeks later. She went to see Mick, who said the same thing had happened as last time. The girls had kept Coco inside for longer, but the cat had come back to the country cottages as soon as he was let out. Mick said that the Gale family thought Coco must be happier living near the fields and the trees, the leaves and the mice. Although the Gales would miss him, they wanted Coco to live where he liked best. So Coco was going to stay with Mick and the Gales were going to get a town loving cat from the rescue centre. So everyone ended up being happy. A homeless cat at the rescue centre got a new home. The Gales got cuddles and purrs again from their new rescue. 
Mick and Alice loved having Coco around and watching him sleep and play. And Coco was especially happy. He got to stay in the country and he could spend part of his time with Mick and part of his time with Alice. Because all cats know that they should really have two homes. What a lucky cat Coco was to, uh, to have a happy outcome. A happy home where he, he could live in the countryside and catch the mice. I hope you enjoyed my story today. I'm sorry that Pebbles hasn't come out to see us. I think she is feeling a bit shy, um, but I'm glad you've had uh, a nice, nice, I think Beanie's had a nice time. Um, so I'm glad we've got to see him. I've got my next book ready and I look forward to bringing it to you soon. Bye for now.